All right, we did it. My Instagram account doubled in the past year, even with a ton of confusing platform changes, sinking engagement, and huge competition. I'm looking at you, TikTok. So if you're looking to grow your Instagram account, keep watching this video. I'm gonna share the five things that I did to get here this year. First, embrace the mess. I mean, this is kind of the theme of the entire 2020s, am I right? This year, I focused more on creating good content than a patterned feed or posting on a particular schedule. Back in the day, it used to be that you'd post on certain days or try to really curate your feed, but these days I post when I feel like I have something to say and focus more on the in-feed experience than the grid experience. What I mean by that is people aren't expecting the grid or the profile view to be polished and perfect all the time like I think people did a few years ago. Nowadays, they're more interested in seeing interesting things pop up when they scroll, so do what's right for that experience. This means paying attention to trending audio, testing out new content formats, and pop culture or world events. This year was the year of the meme, I think, which are pretty scrappy and messy content pieces, but they're engaging, they get shared, they get saved, and they don't need to be perfect. I personally didn't do a ton of memes, but I did share a lot of candid photos and video content, which we'll talk more about in a little bit. Two, no filter. Going along with that, I think it's interesting to note that none of my photos and only one video or reel used a filter in 2021. Now, I've never been a huge filter person to begin with just because I personally think that they can do a little bit of damage to my mental health and beauty standards for younger people in particular, but I was a big fan of ViscoCam back in the day, which is an app that it doesn't face tune you or change your body or face or anything like that, but it enables you to add, you know, moody lighting and effects and things like that. I'm not exactly sure why, but I really stopped using that app or doing any photo editing this year. I think it was just laziness, to be honest. I took the picture and I just put it up as is. Now, if we look at beauty and fashion trends, this makes sense. We're seeing more natural makeup looks, baggy jeans, and arguably the demise of the BBL plastic surgery trend. So I think everyone is leaning towards just being more authentically themselves. These past few years have been really hard for humanity, and I think people are finding comfort in knowing that their favorite creators aren't perfect. We have zits and rolls and fine lines, just like you do, so maybe that's where that comes from. I'll also say that no filter goes beyond the picture itself. My captions were all written in my notes app. I didn't overthink them and spend hours on a computer wrestling with them. I posted pretty real time as opposed to scheduling, and this is a trend I'm seeing in general with social media managers. Many social media managers I follow aren't using scheduling tools a ton anymore. They find it a lot more beneficial to just post natively for what it's worth. Oh my word. If I look at my Instagram grid for the past year, I see something very interesting. Lots of words. Usually I'd keep my images really clean and aesthetically pleasing, but a big trend for Instagram content this past year has been typography and text. This may be a carousel. It could be using real cover text, or for me, something I did a lot was repurpose my tweets. I've actually been spending a lot more time on Twitter this past year and taking screenshots of top performing tweets is a really easy way to repurpose content. It might feel overdone, but it works. My Instagram posts that featured content like this performed really well. They got people talking and most importantly, they were saved and shared a lot. Saves and especially shares into someone's story or as a direct message can really help grow your account because it's bringing new eyes to your page. So get chatty and create some carousels or graphics if you feel inclined. My only warning for this is try to think outside of the box. Canva is a really easy tool to use to create content like this, but shake up those templates and make them your own. 
copy and paste templates get really old and overdone. So add your custom brand colors to the mix, upload custom fonts, and get creative if you wanna stand out. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, I'll say it, test reels. I didn't make reels my entire Instagram strategy this year, but I did add them to the mix when they felt appropriate. Reels definitely are a great way to get in front of new accounts. So if you're a new creator or you don't think that the people who are currently following you are really your ideal client, I definitely try creating some reels to get in front of people who might be your ideal clientele. But here's my warning, getting in front of your ideal client doesn't mean that they'll follow or even engage. You have to develop a real strategy with reels to encourage people to actually want to stick around. Some things that worked for me in that regard and also on TikTok was using trending audio or post formats, but catering them to an online business or freelancing focused audience rather than just doing the silly thing just for silly sake, you know? Also, you can try creating series, i.e. here are five Instagram tips, follow me for the next five, or previewing other content you like to share, like saying, follow me for more online business tips. Link up. Instagram is not my main social media platform. It's a secondary platform to me, really, mainly after YouTube, but these days TikTok too. You see, reels are undoubtedly becoming a huge part of the Instagram landscape, and reels are essentially modeled after TikToks. So it makes the most sense to me to focus on TikTok first, as that's where the trends really start and then repurpose onto Instagram by using the SnapTik app. Now, YouTube videos aren't super easily repurposed onto Instagram, although I did start teasing YouTube content through video clips in my Instagram stories this year, which seemed to convert pretty well. But overall, a YouTube video doesn't make a great reel and a great reel may or may not work on a platform like YouTube Shorts. But I did notice a definite correlation between successful TikToks or YouTube videos and Instagram follows because I linked my accounts. Be sure to add your Instagram or any social media platform that you're looking to grow into your bio or details section of your other top performing social channels. It sounds so obvious, but if someone gets a laugh or learns something from a 15 second TikTok, why not give them an opportunity to find you and connect with you elsewhere on the web? Because I dedicate so much time to YouTube specifically, my Instagram had a constant influx of followers, even on weeks when I didn't post anything at all. Okay, real quick, what are my predictions for Instagram in the next year? Well, I think video will still be a big deal, so get comfortable with it. But don't get bullied into posting a reel every single day. Remember that quality trumps quantity and there are other ways to connect with video on IG too, like lives and stories, for example. I see more messaging and customer service features. Something I didn't talk about much in today's video was just the sheer amount of DMs I get every single day. Some of them are questions about my courses or digital products. Others are general questions about freelancing, but if you do have a service or product-based business, expect this as you grow. Adam Masseri recently announced a hidden DM feature. I'll have to investigate that a little bit more, but I'm sure that there's a lot more messaging features to come. And lastly, not really a prediction, more of a question. What's up with monetization? Instagram has been sending me those creator bonus pop-ups for a while, and I'm curious if anyone has tapped into that. Comment down below if you have, or if anyone will actually see a financial incentive from creating video content on Instagram. For me, the main reason I haven't went all in on Reels is because I have to make smart financial decisions for the business. And if I can get paid by posting a video on YouTube and not on Instagram, the answer is pretty clear. If Instagram or TikTok for that matter want to compete on long form content, I think they need to pay up. So we'll see what happens with that. All right, let me know which of these tips you found most helpful and if there's anything else you did this year to grow your Instagram following. And if you enjoyed, please do tap the like and subscribe button down below. Also hit that bell notification so you don't miss a video. Next one will be out on Friday. Have a great day. I'll talk to you next time. Happy new year.